Happy birthday, Herbert, or happy birthday, Herbert. Wherever you are, happy birthday, Herbert. We're going to start the program with Stuart Meyer. Let's hit you up with a bio. Stuart Meyer's novel, The Lotus Crew, Grove Press 1984, Serpent's Tale 1997, features Herbert Hunky as the magical character Handy Carbona. Ladies and gentlemen, Stuart Meyer. You know, I was just thinking, uh, one time I was walking down 2nd Avenue in Herbert Hunky, and every fucking panhandler on the street addressed him as Mr. Hunky. <laughs> this is from Memory Chips. Now, I was uh, fortunate enough to spend a lot of time with William Burroughs, who was helping me with my writing. He was telling me shit like... I want you to tear this up in little pieces and throw it in someone else's garbage can. <laughs> but, but eventually, after seven years, he actually said, okay, this is good, we're gonna take this to the agent and shit. But okay, uh, I had a habit of, after a conversation with, with Burroughs, I would go home and, like a good little fucking sophomore, I'd write it all out, you know? So it's gonna come up in a minute. First, just a brief introduction. Herbert Hunky started out as a middle-class kid, but he hit the road early in life. He joined that distinctly American breed of rail riders who gathered by campfires on the side of the tracks, eating beans out of heated tin cans. They swapped lies, they drank and joked with the passion of men that knew the party could end at any minute. Well, the Great Depression swelled their ranks, and young Herbert received a broad, specialized education that suited him well over the next few years when he would become a teacher to a tiny clique of literary men who would eventually be known as the beat writers. So it was Hunky who introduced William Burroughs to the magical perils of heroin use and it was Hunky who took Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg through the dark conduits that fueled their writing. Uh, and appeared as a character in all of their major works. Now, when Hunky arrived in New York, Times Square was sort of a monument to excess and perversion, and Hunky fit right in. Uh, his taste for heroin led him uh, to employ his skills as a male prostitute, uh, thief, and um, general con man. But a fondness for uh, writing caused him to keep notes and hang out with writers. Well, by the mid-1980s, Hunky's Journal and the Evening Sun Turned Crimson had been published. Guilty of Everything was awaiting a publisher. By the way, that's a Burroughs title, and when it was first suggested, uh, <coughs> Hunky's feelings were hurt. He's, he's not guilty of everything. <laughs> right. Anyway, I first spoke to Hunky at a New Year's Eve party, a reunion given by John Giorno at 222 Bowery, it was a beat reunion welcoming in the uh, 1980s. William Burroughs' infamous bunker was in the same building. Well, I told Hunky that I enjoyed reading uh, Hunky's journal, but he blew the compliment aside. He went right into his humble pie shit, you know. Man, I'm nobody. One day you're gonna have to apologize for knowing people like me, he said. I suppose uh, Bill has warned you, and he cocked his eye over to where Burroughs stood nursing uh, rum and coke. All I could say was, uh, William speaks very fondly of you. And that was sort of true. So I gave Hunky my business card. Two days later, he fell by the office with a manuscript guilty of everything, and he said, he handed it to me, and he said, maybe you can help me tighten this up. Well, a few weeks later at the table in the bunker, I, I was, uh, sitting there with Burroughs, and I just wanted to bring up the subject, so I said, where's Hunky tonight? And uh, Burroughs kicked back and he said, ah, oh, the life of a thief, probably up to no good. Um, he settled back in his orange chair, looked at me sternly and said, don't forget the warning that comes with Hunky. There is dark magic that prevails around Herbert Hunky. Hmm. Uh, well, 
I spent all my spare time reading that manuscript. It sort of reminded me of uh, Emmett Grogan's Ring of Levio. Amoral, charming. Uh, Burroughs agreed. Uh, he lit a senior service cigarette and he started fidgeting as if suddenly realizing that the chair was unsuited to his body. For me, uh, Jack Black's You Can't Win is the essence of that type of writing. Okay, so are you saying that uh, I can't turn my back on this guy? That he's got his eye on anything that can be ripped off and taken to a pawn shop? Yes, Burroughs said. That is the general tradition. Well, are we talking about uh, any expectations of ethics that we might consider reliable? Well, Burroughs paused for a second, assembling his thoughts. Hunky? Not at all. His ethics are rigid, rigidly criminal. <laughs> Once he was arrested by the narcs, he was facing time, junk sick, no money, no friends, no family to fall back on. Uh, they tried to get him to uh, set up me and Allen Ginsberg, maybe a few others. Instead, Hunky warned us. He told us the police were looking to drum up charges. He would not break the code. We left town, he went to jail. Still, William, stealing from friends. Well, it's a different way of seeing the world, uh, the integrity of a thief. You see, Hunky would never steal from someone who had less than him. As far as he was concerned, Alan and I, our circle, we were the rich Ivy League set. We were using him. He knew his way around Times Square. He knew the jazz scene from the inside, the streets, the drug scene. He was introducing us to people and to a way of looking at things. We were learning from him. In a sense, he was liberating us. So he was playing us in return. William closed his eyes in reflection before continuing. Lifting a rug I stored in Alan's closet, selling it to buy dope, sneaking a few rare books out of Alan's apartment. The eyes popped open. Alan received the worst of it because he could not bring himself to stay mad at Hunky, whereas I let it be known these infractions would not be tolerated. Uh, your friendship is endured, William. He acts like a naughty child around you. William chuckled. I believe a mutual respect has evolved. Now that he's on the methadone program, he's more prone to profiting than pilfering. I give him a hundred bucks a week for a bottle of meth. Still, I would not leave him alone in the archive room for five minutes. He's aware of this and he always acts a bit insulted. <laughs> very sensitive guy, Mr. Hunky. Yes, I agreed, a very complex guy. Among his many gifts, William added, Mr. Hunky has a strong and highly specialized talent for locating Schmeck anywhere. Man, he could score in the Gobi Desert. Thank you. Stuart Meyer, everybody. And David Schmidlap. Let's give him a hand before before we welcome uh, Jeremiah Newton. Sorry about that, David. <laughs>